Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to this playlist where I'm covering the intermediate certifications and this certification is about all about JavaScript intermediate. Let's give it a try. Proceed. Continue. Take test. And here we are. Uh, it should have uh, two questions for 90 minutes. Okay, so let's start user transactions, uh, solve it, uh, what it is looking for. This is the first time I'm seeing this kind of a problem. Okay, so what it needs is implement get number of transaction. It takes a username as an input. Okay. And then it takes a username and it returns either a number of transaction associated with the username or a string user name not found if no such user exists make the get request given the rest endpoint given the username user details should be fetched by making the get call okay this is the the first call where the username it will contains the five fields base and all data either an empty or a single array containing the user detail so it will give us the username Okay, if the username passed to the request does not exist in the system, the data will be empty. In this case, the function should return username not found. Okay, the user detail successfully fetched. Use the ID property to the detail object to fetch the transactions. Okay, got it. So it's like there are two API calls. A simple API call is first one. Uh, we'll make the API call, get the user ID, pass the user ID into the second API call, get the transactions. Okay. So it's all about playing with the axios require axios okay here we have these two api calls so const response we can simply do await axios dot get and we have to pass this username This time they actually put this in the, in the notes, uh, rest endpoints, otherwise we have to type that manually. And then const result equal to response dot data. Okay, and this is JSON object which we are getting in the response. Now the response object will contain all these things. So result will further will have a data if result of data is there and result dot data dot length is greater than zero then only there is a user id object is there so then we can get the id because this is the signature of this one we can get this id from result dot data zero as it's already saying it will only contains a single array object okay if the username passed to the request does not exist the data will be empty in that case we need to return username not found else i cannot copy anything username it should be exact not Found okay. If username is found, then we have to make the another API call that is about so let's call it as a response one. And this API call is this one which is taking user ID, user ID equal to the ID okay, and we can get the result result one equal to response one dot data and what we need to return from here is then where the id property the response will contain the following five fields space blah 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 data either empty array or array with the transaction record of the user okay here is the total number of transaction that user has put so we just need to return the total okay that is easy i think return result one dot total looks like this is it we run the code 
response one dot data result one dot total okay run all the test cases and it is passing so we didn't do anything right it's like very simple operation i hope this is clear to everyone what we have done in this uh, example this should be clear and now let's move to another problem okay the goal of the problem is to use the prototype inheritance create a function activity that takes a single parameter amount and assign it to the number variable amount okay so what it is saying is we have the amount and this is the member variable amount add the following function to the activity prototype how we can do it is activity dot prototype dot there are two functions set amount equal to function this is how we create a prototype on top of function this is first prototype this is second prototype and there is another method is get amount set amount takes a single parameter value if the value is less than 0 it returns false otherwise it assigns the value so here is the thing it takes the value as an input and here what it is saying is if value is less than or equal to 0 less than or equal to 0 that means we have to return false otherwise we can just see this dot amount equal to assigns the value to the amount and returns true this dot amount equal to value and return true okay get amount returns the variable amount so if the simple logic is return this dot amount so this is our first activity function with the prototype set amount and get amount create a function payment that inherits the parent activity okay uh, so how do we do this so it's like a prototypal inheritance there is a payment uh, amount and receiver inherits from the parent activity okay let's uh, do this so what it is saying is it takes two arg parameter amount and the receiver so what we need to do is it assigns the parameter number variable amount and uh, self member variable receiver so there is a receiver so self member variable is a receiver this dot receiver equal to receiver and we need to call the, the pairing class constructor using activity dot call activity dot call and uh, we need to just assign amount this is how we can call the activity function and set the amount <coughs> So there is another function activity dot so payment dot prototype. We'll see if something is wrong there. Set receiver take a single parameter and assign the member variable. So it takes the receiver as the argument and it is assigning this dot receiver equal to receiver and get receiver is another function and it is just returning. this dot receiver now we need to create a function refund that takes two argument amount and the sender and assigns the parent member variable amount and self to a sender again the same stuff I guess this dot sender equals to sender it's a self member variable and we need to call the activity dot call 
this and we are passing amount then we have a set sender and get sender so we will just use copy paste payment refund and there is a method set sender get sender this dot uh, sender variable and this is setting up the sender to the sender variable now what we need to do is I think there is already a stub written already here which will call the constructor of the activity payment object that this dot payment here we can see okay the payment so what we are doing is we are calling the payment object percent the creation amount payment object created with amount payment object dot get amount and the receiver so we also need to inherit uh, the prototype properties of activity into the payment so that payment object can call the activity methods so here we need to link the prototypes I mean there are many ways you can assign the activity dot prototype equal to I mean uh, payment dot prototype equal to activity activity dot prototype or uh, there is a smart way of doing it which is object dot set prototype of so what it will do is it will copy the prototype of payment payment dot prototype equal to activity uh, dot prototype similarly we can link the same with the, the refund so payment dot prototype similarly refund dot prototype is getting assigned with the hero dot uh, activity dot prototype okay this should work now because we are calling activity and we are the, the refund object is actually calling the get and setters of the activity prototype methods like uh, the set amount get amount right similarly the payment payment is inheriting the prototype of the activity so uh, this is the payment this is how we are doing it let's copy this after the payment definition so we are inheriting the property prototype of activity so that we should be able to call the get amount and set amount let's run the code and see how much uh, okay it's good we did it so now i will just do a quick recap what we have done is the activity right so this is the activity function with the two prototype methods which has the amount as a member variable now the, there is a payment payment has a receiver but he wants the payment wants to use the amount uh, function prototype so we define the method and we are calling the we are actually doing a dot call to set the amount property to the activity prototype and then we are also inheriting the activity prototype into the payment prototype using this object dot set prototype of then similarly the refund also wants to use the amount prototype methods from the activity function so we have to link it like this so that the refund can also use set amount and get amount methods because rest all you can see this what we are doing we are creating a payment object and then we are using set amount get amount methods similarly the refund refund object is also using the set amount get amount uh, set, set sender get sender all these methods right so this is a pure and very simple example of the prototypal inheritance and this is how we do the link of the prototype of one parent prototype to the child this is a child prototype this is the parent prototype this is a child this is a parent we can we can just simply use the classes and we can say class a define these methods get amount set amount class b extends class a define these methods receiver and set receiver and get receiver class d extends class a again we define the set sender and get sender that might be the easiest one but here we want to do it in the prototype based and this is the nice and the clean implementation okay 
Uh, thanks everyone.